stoke is real, my man. <laughs> the stoke is very high. I always get stoked when I go to see condors. It, it's just perpetual. But with the team and with everybody here, it makes it that much more fun, that much more exciting. Especially when I get to show people who've never seen condors before. Oh my gosh, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> It's hard to see the, nope, that's wrong. Can't see the lines. Yeah. All right, we're here. Yeah. Do it. My name is Joshua Asel. I'm a wildlife and conservation photographer for the International League of Conservation Photographers. I spent a lot of time photographing rare endangered species, uh, keystone species, and uh, bellwether species as well. It can be eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours sometimes on a really long day, summer day, where it can be upwards of 110 degrees here. It's kind of just what it takes in order to see the condors. How's everybody feeling? Good. Good, good, good. Ready to do this? We're at the very top of Pinnacles National Park. This is the best place to see California condors. It's also the most commanding view in the entire area. So anywhere you look out, it's going to be lower than this place, which is also why it's the kingdom of the condors here. It's their main home. California condors are one of the most critically endangered birds in the world. And they also happen to be the largest bird in North America because they live for such a long time, about 60 years, it takes that much more time for them to develop. There might be anywhere between six to 10 deaths per year. Most of the time it's just lead poisoning, you know, eating big fragments of exploded bullets inside of carcasses. My whole life I trained as a fine artist, drawing and painting and stuff. I really thought it was, it was what I was going to do. And then I grew dispassionate about it. And then I found this website called Project Noah and you could upload photos of the animals you saw. And I've always just loved animals. I went outside and photographed the first thing I saw, which was an invasive species of dove. And I just got this massive rush of like adrenaline. And I was just, that was it, that was it. I was like, this is what I'm meant to do. This is what I'm doing for the rest of my life. I dropped out of college the next day and just started dedicating my life to wildlife conservation. if it's a weird calling that I just can't shake. I, I just gotta keep getting back out here. I gotta keep trying to help these condors. I'm just pulled towards them. I'm gravitating towards them. I don't know, there's something, it's like calling to me. I have to get out here. Right now you can see where the thermals are. That, that They're literally the physical embodiment of the thermals right now. So they shoot up and you can see they're starting to shoot out in different directions. So birds of prey like this, where they're obligate soarers, they hit the thermals, they go in circles as they rise up and then they shoot out into different directions. You, you'll know when you see a condor, you know it. it it's just like, <laughs> 
it's just the dinosaur that you know that's flying in the sky it's so they're so big turkey vultures you know maybe five to six foot wingspan something like that and then the condor is nine to ten feet turkey vultures about four or five pounds condor is 25 pounds you're talking turkey vulture condor Even though I've been here for four or five years, where they go within this park, it's, it's a mystery because they, they just know all the nooks and crannies and the weird places to get to that humans can't get to. They take off in the morning around 9, 9.30, and then they head out west to Big Sur, which is one of their biggest home sites. The biologists over there do a lot of hands-on work with the condors. They provide health checks. They provide uh, supplementary food, which happens to be cow carcasses. Typically, they're feeding on seals, whales, dolphins, big animals that wash up. Condors will eat any large animal carcasses that they can find, like deer, coyotes, pigs, and cows. The cow carcasses that are provided in Big Sur allow the biologists to observe and work with the condors. It also ensures that the condors have at least one clean food source that's not contaminated by fragments of lead ammunition. Condor. Subadult, maybe uh, five or six years old. The condor's role to play is to maintain and clean up environments. And it prevents diseases, it prevents viruses. They're one of the last ice age creatures that exist. They used to feast on massive animals, which is why they're so big. They used to feast on saber-toothed tigers. They used to feast on mastodons. I mean, it's incredible, but it means that they also fill a niche in the environment that we need. 94, 10, 94 trying to provide the imagery that proves that these animals exist um, or this place is worth protecting uh, is really important. So I generate stories that create awareness and the more stories that I generate for Pinnacles National Park, more and more people come. And what that means is more science-based funding, more funding for the rangers, more funding for the biologists, more funding for California condor conservation, which is the condor recovery program in Pinnacles. And if I'm getting images, I'm proving that these animals still exist. They're still around. They're still worth protecting. 1094, 900s, born in the year 2018, 2019. I don't have 94 in here. That's a new one. I'll give you plenty of my snacks though, bro. Don't worry, I have so many snacks. Condor. Oh yeah. When you have a connection with a condor, there I mean there's just nothing like it. They will look you right in the eyes. And it's you can see the intelligence, you understand the sentience of this being. We are souls living a human experience, and I feel like I'm looking at a soul living a condor experience. This place calls to me. I like, I can't deny it. It's, it's where my heart is, you know? Where your heart is is what's gonna make you care and come back and want you to keep doing more.